You're watching The Daily Climate Show on Sky News. On today's programme... Show your stripes, the campaign to raise awareness of how climate change is happening right now. How increasing temperatures could be good news for fans of English wine. And the children leading the way to a green future. I'll be talking to TV presenter Helen Skelton about a competition to help inspire the next generation. Hello and welcome to the UK's only daily climate news show where we track the changes happening to our world right now and meet those who are coming up with the solutions. Well, we start today with a global campaign to raise awareness of how climate change is happening around the world right now. And here on our data dashboard, you can see the level of human-induced warming since the Industrial Revolution. It is ticking up the whole time as our planet heats up. Well, another way to show that increase is the warming stripes. These graphics here are visual representations of the change in temperature as measured in each country over at least the past 100 years. They show how our world is warming, turning from mainly blue in the late 1800s through to the darker red colours that you see today. Well, they were created by Professor Ed Hawkins, a climate scientist at the University of Reading, who joins me now. Professor Hawkins, good to talk to you. It's a pretty stark visualisation when you see it there on the screen. Are there any countries which haven't turned from predominantly blue to predominantly red over that period? No, every country you look at around the world has shown this warming trend uh, and this is illustrated by the stripes turning from blue to red wherever you are in the world. And when we look at the picture of the UK, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it goes from predominantly blue and then there's a real change round about what looks to be about the 1990s. Just talk us through it. So in the UK, we've warmed as well, and that gradual warming started uh, quite early on in the early 1900s. But then we saw this rapid acceleration around the world since about the 1960s or 1970s, and we see that reflected in the UK as well. And I want to draw our attention as well to the to the warming stripes that we've got here for the Arctic, because that tells the starkest picture of all, doesn't it? Because it goes to pretty much a solid bar of dark red by the end there. The Arctic is warming faster than anywhere else on the planet, more than twice as fast as the global average. And that is melting the sea ice, as we've seen over the last 40 years or so. We've seen a huge reduction in the amount of sea ice covering the Arctic. The story, though, isn't new, particularly not to climate scientists. What is the point of these warming stripes? The idea is to start conversations about the reality of our warming world. They can be used in so many different ways. People have got masks or mugs or badges. People have even painted their cars uh, in these stripes to highlight the, the reality of our warming world and start conversations with friends and family uh, about that reality. Do you have confidence that climate change is being taken more seriously now? It certainly is being taken more seriously. In the UK, we've seen the government commit to net zero emissions by 2050. We need the policies to get there, and it's going to be extremely difficult uh, for us all to, to, to achieve that goal, but it is definitely possible, and we need to do it. Professor Ed Hawkins, great to talk to you. Thank you. Well, let's take a look at today's other climate news now. In the western United States, people are being told to expect water shortages and wildfires as a heat wave worsens the mega drought there. Temperatures have reached 50 degrees Celsius in parts of California, which is experiencing the highest levels of hot weather in history. The mega drought is a naturally occurring event. It started back in 2000, but researchers say climate change is making it more severe. Angelina Jolie has visited a refugee camp in Burkina Faso to mark World Refugee Day. The actor says the refugee crisis is only going to get worse as conflict and climate change force hundreds of millions of people to leave their homes. 
And the National Trust is urging people to respect nature as they look forward to a summer of staycations. With most people expected to holiday in the UK this year, the Trust is asking everyone to tidy up after themselves in a bid to keep beauty spots clean. They said cleaning up after visitors diverts rangers from their conservation work. Now, the popularity of English wine is increasing and climate change could be a factor. The South Downs is already home to 51 vineyards and 11 wineries. And as warmer summers become more frequent, it's predicted that grape growing opportunities in the area will increase. In a moment, I'll be speaking to an English winemaker. But first, here's your 60 second crash course in viticulture. We can bring in Tamara Roberts now, CEO of Ridgeview Wine Estate, who are based in Ditchling in the South Downs. Tamara, good to talk to you. A talk of this boom in winemaking in the South Downs. Are you feeling it? Oh, well, certainly. There's been such a massive increase um, in uh, interest in our industry and investment into it as well over the last particularly five to ten years. So, yeah, very exciting times. And how has the way you go about winemaking changed because of the climate? It's, we were talking about this earlier and actually, the, you know, I think one of the sort of standout um, figures that we had was uh, three of the last four harvests have actually been started in September, whereas in the previous sort of 20, 20 years prior to that, it'd be very rare to see a harvest begin um, outside of the first or second week of October. So, um, you know, we certainly have seen um, our harvest dates being brought forward uh, due to, to weather conditions in the, in, the, in the growing season. So that's been um, something we can't dispute at all. So the so changes around those sorts of things and being perhaps a little bit more conscious of higher sugar levels um, than we were in the past, because for us, that's quite critical for sparkling wine production. And do you have to even be thinking now about adaptations that you need to make for future climate change? I think it's interesting. It's, um, it's difficult to predict exactly what that's going to materialise um, as in, in, in our areas because um, we're not entirely sure whether we're going to have, see more rainfall at certain times of the year, perhaps in more difficult times of the year for us during the growing season. Um, and so to make adjustments now when we're not really sure how the climate change is actually going to manifest uh, for us in a grain is, is very tricky. So what we're doing is just being, as we would normally be, taking each season as it comes and reacting to what's in front of us at that point. Well, cheers to that. Uh, Tamara, really good to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. School pupils across the UK are being given the chance to have their voices heard by world leaders at the COP26 summit in November and come up with innovative ways to save the planet in the process. The Voices for a Green Future competition has been launched by the National Grid to inspire children to come up with new ways to help tackle climate change. Here's a taster of some of their ideas. Everybody has to have at least three trees in their garden. Investing more into wind, solar. Stop people from um, going on aeroplanes. Save electricity by not having any lights on for like the rest of your life. A battery powered um, jetpack. Hamster powered trains. Giant mutated hamster powered trains. To get a big zip fire. 
Well, the television presenter Helen Skelton is one of the judges of that competition and joins me now. Hello, Helen. They're certainly not short of ideas, are they, the younger generation? And do you know what? I think we can learn so much from young people. We know that 80% of kids feel that, you know, climate change is their responsibility. 86% of them feel empowered to do something about it. And that's why National Grid wanted to talk to kids and get them talking about all of these ideas. Because the brilliant thing about young people is they don't see what can't be done. They think about what can be done. I'm not suggesting for one second any scientist will think we should have giant mutated hamster powered trains, but it might make somebody think, is there an alternative way to power planes or to power cars, which is brilliant. And what's so powerful about it is that leaders will see videos like that in Glasgow at COP26. And it's a powerful reminder, isn't it, that it's their generation's future that's at stake. Absolutely. And so often, you know, we think, oh, we should be telling kids to do this and we should be telling kids to do that. But actually, I think what's brilliant about this National Grid competition is that we're putting the onus on kids. Like you say, they're the ones who are going to be the leaders of the future. And if those kids are anything to go by, we're going to be in safe hands. But in 2050, they're the ones who are going to have the responsibility for this. And they're the ones that actually at the minute think, let's turn the lights off. Let's walk to school. Let's recycle. It's already in their minds to do the little things. And if all of those little things add up, up, then collectively it will make a big difference, hopefully. And Helen, it already in their minds, as you're saying, a really sad statistic, one in three almost having nightmares about the environment. It just goes to show how important it is to kids, though. You know, and it just goes to show that it is on their radar and it is something that they're thinking about and they're talking about. And for me, there wasn't one kid who didn't talk about trees. And I know for my kids, you know, I always say to them, we're not getting in the car, we're going to walk. Because if you want to climb trees like you love doing, then that's how we're going to protect it. And I think it's just about engaging in a way that works for them. Nobody's talking about scaremongering or talking about, you know, the world's going to end. You, we just just need to build on the fact that they feel empowered, that they have the opportunity to change things going forward. And I think, as I've said so many times, it's the little things that we can all do together collectively. And they're the little things you can still at home that will provide a basis for us to be able to tackle climate change. I love how excited kids get about wind and solar and ultimately clean and green energy is going to be so key to fighting climate change. And kids already are clued into that. You know, it's not alien to kids to see wind turbines or have solar panels on houses. So hopefully we can get them excited about those possibilities in the future. Something tells me you're going to have a tough job picking a winner. Helen Skelton, good to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, that is everything from us for today on The Daily Climate Show tomorrow. As the world tries to move away from fossil fuels, is enough being done to help those who rely on those industries for work? We're going to be finding out more about what's known as the just transition. That's at the same time tomorrow here on Sky News. Hope to see you then.